I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching Long Haul. So we at the Watercraft Journal are in a little bit of a pickle here. Last year we awarded the RXTX 300 the Watercraft of the Year. And we even gave the GTX Limited 300 second runner up in our Watercraft of the Year contest. So what does SeaDoo do the very next year? They completely revise it from the ground up. Totally new Watercraft. What we're looking at is possibly Possibly the very best runabout we have ever seen from SeaDoo. Let me reiterate, once again, this is possibly the single best runabout this company has ever made. Not that, you know, we're biased or anything. What they did is that they started completely from scratch. They redesigned a hull, taking a lot of DNA from the T3 hull, and applied it to a full-size runabout. But that wasn't good enough. They took last year's CM Tech special mold process that they first debuted on the GTR X230, and they applied it not only to the deck, but to the hull. All right, this is a whole new proprietary process unique to them. It allows them a lot more durability, a little bit more flexibility, and they can apply a really neat, really rich color to it as well. Another neat feature of CM Tech is the nice smooth surface that goes all around the inside. But that's not enough. With the new ST3 hull, they cut three inches out of the total length, add 1.2 inches to the total width, and they drop the rider center of gravity an inch and a half and the passenger by three. So you have a lower center of gravity, you're deeper into the well, and the ski, amazingly enough, weighs a staggering 86 pounds less. That's like having a, a kid off the ski. So it's lighter, it's shorter, it's wider, and it's a heck of a lot faster. They're reporting half a second acceleration gain from 30 to 60 miles an hour. The powertrain remains the same. It's the ACE 300 1.6 liter. Same pump, same engine, everything works great. So they've applied it to a better power to weight ratio. So what does the ST3 hull give you? Well, in the last two days of testing here on the Colorado River, we've experienced most of everything. We had nice, smooth glass water. We've had 20 mile an hour chop. We've had a lot of boat traffic. We've gone through everything. This watercraft hull takes it all and it loves it. We found that the RXTX shines when you take that trim and you drop it all the way down, get that nose down, and it's gonna carve like you wouldn't believe. If you're just cruising or you're cutting through chop, set it at neutral and it's happy as can be. We found that the, the wider platform combined with that real deep keel taken from that RXPX provides this watercraft with an ability at speed to cut straight through anything you can throw at it. When cruising, 35, 40 miles an hour. This watercraft simply likes to cruise. You can cut churns, you can run along the coastline. It's as happy as can be just doing anything you can throw at it. If you're concerned about how dry or wet the ride is, it depends on how hard you want to ride it. If you're at neutral and you're cruising, you can wear jeans and a t-shirt and shoes and you won't get wet. But if you really want to be aggressive, throw that nose down, guess what? It's a wet and wild ride. SeaDoo put in some nice new touches for the 2018 RXTX. You can see here in the footwell, they took the foot wedges and they extended them double the length. Why do they do that? Because the passenger now has their own version of the ergo lock seat. They can pinch in here, hang on tight, either here or here, and with the, with the driver, can hang on tight and get aggressive while riding. Obviously, they redesigned the glove box but it's a little unique for this year. You'll see it's a little bit more shallow than before, and you have a nice waterproof iPhone and smartphone case. This has a nice pad in there for shock absorption and 
locks in tight and is waterproof. Well, why is it so shallow? Well, we'll show you. Inside, you've got 27 gallons of real accessible storage. They call this their direct access front storage compartment. Over the length of my whole arm, you can pack as much in here as you possibly could. We joke that it's the largest glove box in the industry. They also include your fire extinguisher and your emergency kit, and it closes down nice and easy. Also inside, you're gonna see that they relocated the gas cap. Gas cap also has a nice splash guard, so no worries about getting gasoline inside of your compartment. And there's also two vents so that it'll drain down here into the footwell and not contaminate the inside of your watercraft. The last great feature that isn't necessarily standard on the RXTX, but we got to insist that everyone who gets a new RXTX orders it with it, is Sea-Doo's new BRP Premium Audio System. This new sound system is only an extra $700 on top of your the standard asking price. So what makes this really unique is that it's the only Bluetooth accessible sound system on a personal watercraft. Simply log in with your phone, go into your Bluetooth settings, and now you can control your entire sound system through this keypad right here and enjoy a ride with your own personal tunes. Another addition to the ST3 equipped RXTX 300 is this new swim platform. The swim platform is the biggest in the industry. It's 366 square inches of space. Now, on top of that, you're gonna see, obviously they put a nice tie area here. You can tie off your rope to the dock. And then what they've also added is the new link system. The link system is a modular accessory package that allows you to attach one of three items to the back of any one of the SC3 platforms, whether it's a GTX, an RXT, or an RXTX. In this case, we've got a four gallon gas can. There's also a 5.5 gallon storage bag, and there's even a cooler option that's four and a half gallons. It attaches really simply. All you have to do is pull this tab, you throw the lock, and it pops right off and simply take these tabs, give them a pinch, push them down. It's a nice flat surface. Also something really unique to all the ST3 platform watercraft is this. Now, this port allows you to attach the retractable ski pylon that was normally exclusive to only the wake models. Now you can have an RXTX with a wake tower. Another major change for 2018 is the redesigned third generation IBR. Sea-Doo took their reverse gate and they added four new portals for thrust to be redirected. This allows the watercraft to naturally idle in place or to maneuver and parallel park like you would at a dock. This radically changes the attitude of the watercraft while sitting still on a flat surface while you're out moving around. For 2018, sea also got rid of their single seat articulated spring-loaded seat that would fold up and they went with a tiered two-piece seat. This helped cut the weight down on the watercraft. Well, all you have to do to take the seats off, push these two tabs, pull your back seat off, and then with a single handle, off goes your driver's seat. Another unique feature to the ST3 platform is the unique access to the engine. Obviously, you have immediate access with taking the driver's seat off. There you can reach coolant, check your oil, and some usual uh, maintenance items. But with the removal of 13 screws, you have possibly one of the largest access ports to the engine compartment. Here, you can reach in, you can change your oil, you can access everything here. This is absolutely the mechanic's dream. Obviously for service and for the performance enthusiast who likes to modify, 
you can crawl in here, it's so big. Uh, with the use of the CM Tech, you're also using or also enjoying a nice smooth finish. Gone is all that really rough fiberglass fiber that would embed in your hands and in your arms. So this is a really great improvement over previous models. Never to leave well enough alone, Sea-Doo put a lot of extra thought into redesigning the handlebars on the RX-TX. We have a really handsome handlebar unit and pad, but the really neat feature is that they've redesigned the toggles into these nice pads. These thumb pads retain all the same functions that you're used to, but it makes it really natural to move your VTS trim, sport mode or eco mode, and obviously all your controls for the dash. Two other features that are worth mentioning on the RX-TX are the neutral adjustment control and launch control. These work specifically with the eye control brain to articulate the VTS trim. What the neutral adjustment does is that while you're sitting at idle, you hit that button and that articulates the trim nozzle so that that watercraft, watercraft is keeping a nice neutral stance at all times. And for you guys who love performance and want a really good hard launch without having the watercraft launch out of the water but maintain a really good plane from the get-go all the way forward to full speed, simply hold down the up and down on VTS and you're gonna see the prompt come up saying that launch control has been activated. All you have to do is grab the throttle and off you go, and that watercraft will launch hard, flat, and straight. All right, we are now in sport mode. We're gonna put this to the test right now. There it is. I gotta say, we're nothing but impressed with this machine. I'm Kevin Shaw, and you've been watching Long Haul. Make sure to check us out Monday through Friday at the Watercraft Journal. That's www.watercraftjournal.com.